So I'm gonna show you guys one of the most powerful and useful guard passing systems in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. This position is often referred to as the HQ or headquarters position. The reason it's so useful is there's so many different types of guards and combinations of what your opponent can do, it can become a bit overwhelming. But by trapping our opponent's leg, we massively limit the options of what they can do, and we can not only control and rest when we need, but we can set up tons of different passing opportunities. The the way I'm going to show the system is slightly different than most people do. Many people, when they trap the leg, they control the lapel with their right arm, the opposite side of the leg they have trapped. In this system, I'm going to switch it up and control the lapel with our left arm and the leg with the right arm. One of the main reasons for this is it prevents our opponent from using their free leg to loop around and push us away, freeing their trapped leg. In addition, I find it's a lot more stable to prevent your opponent from bumping you and setting up attacks. So we're gonna start off by trapping this leg here. There's a lot of different ways we can do this and I'm gonna go into that later. So either way, I just trap this leg and then the first grip I wanna focus on is making a grip on this leg here. A lot of people here trap the leg and then they grab the lapel, but the problem here is this foot can lasso over to my shoulder and push me away, allowing him to free his leg. So what we wanna focus on is making a grip on this leg and I like to grab on the outside of the pants. Because if I grab on the inside of the pants or I just push the leg here, even though I have a grip, he can still loop over this grip and eventually get out. When I have an outside grip on the pants, either at the knee or the base of the pants, depending on his pants, it makes a ceiling that his leg can't get through. If you see if my hand is here and his leg tries to come over top, it's always blocked by the forearm. So when I grab here and he starts trying to loop over, he can never get through that position. So the next thing we're gonna focus on is how we keep this leg trapped and where we put our left arm. So there's a lot of different grips he can do, and as I go into the video, I'm gonna show how to counter each way he's gonna defend this. But the basic idea is we want to keep this leg trapped. So often I'm gonna keep my knees kind of pinched here. Sometimes I'll even drop this knee to the floor, but I wanna make sure I'm keeping this in. If you step this back a little too much, this can come back out, right? So as this is trapped, often my left arm can be in a few different positions. One I like a lot is this lapel grip because it gives me balance and pushes him down. Sometimes if I'm on the ground, I can even put this on the floor. And sometimes when I stand up, I'll actually cut the knee to set up different passing attacks. So the first passing situation we're gonna look at is gonna be based off of when our opponent tries to either break the grip of the leg that we are controlling, or they in general just try to push and move a lot to try to escape from the position that you have them trapped in. So in this first situation, they're gonna be looking to grab the sleeve and break this grip. Sometimes they'll even grab the cross collar here. As long as I have this outside pant grip here, it's very hard to break the grip, especially if you're at the knee, because he can't kick his leg far enough and my palm kind of braces into his knee here. So from here, because he's going for the sleeve and he doesn't have the grip on my foot, my leg is free to move. So often what I'll do here is I kind of come in here and I'm gonna step this leg high and around. Once I come around here, I have a very strong finish position. This leg cannot lasso over because I have the outside knee grip and I can move around come into knee on belly and consolidate inside. Another variation of this could be is I back up a little bit here and now I can grab this other pant leg and it turns into more of a Toriando sequence, but it still finishes in the same kind of knee on belly side control situation. Another excellent option here is as I'm in this position, if I feel this knee opens up a little bit more, is it can use this to drop into a long step pass. So again, what I do is I kind of move out to the side and I drop down and try to catch my head to tripod into his chest. From here, I often switch down the back and now I can walk around, smash up and come to the finish. And remember guys, if you're enjoying this content, be sure to comment and let me know if you have any questions or future requests. And as always, like and subscribe to help support the channel. Another method of trying to escape from this position will be your opponent trying to turn to the other side to escape to a knee shield or a reverse De La Hiva position. Usually when they do this, they have to put their foot on the floor to actually get the force to turn to the other side. And we can use this to set up knee cut passes and other attacking opportunities. Because I'm pushing here, he doesn't have enough force to just turn back this way because I'm keeping his hip pinned with this grip on the leg. So often when I'm here, he'll have to put this foot on the floor. So as he turns to the other side, the fact that this is pinned keeps this open so I can drop into a nice cut position here. If you didn't have this and he turns in and he has a knee shield or a good reverse de la Hiva, now he has a lot more ability to fight in this position. 
but because we're coming to it from this position here, he actually exposes a lot more opening when he does this. So I'm here controlling, he tries to turn back into the other side, and I'm gonna drop here. As I do this drop and he turns, I wanna use my shin to pin this leg to the floor. Once I've cleared this, there's a lot of different finish variations you can do from here. If this leg is fully killed, I'll always try to switch up to the rib cage because now once my arm gets ahead of the leg, he can never lasso because I'm at the front of the leg and I can come through. I'm not gonna go super in depth on it. It's possible from here he could try to grab a single leg maybe. And now this turns into more of like a half guard passing sequence where I use a lot of face cranks. I've done other videos on this before. But the thing is, if you're fighting a really good open guard player, you basically funnel them to the exact position they don't want to be in. And if you know how to pressure from here, it's a really, really bad position for them. In this situation that as they turn, they do get a good reverse De La Hiva hook in, what I always wanna focus on here is pulling this leg back towards the floor. If I allow him to get this in my bicep, he can push and start inverting to go underneath for attacks. So I pull this back and now try to get that in the bicep. It's hard to get back to the bicep. From here, it's possible to drop for long steps. It's possible to pop this straight and cut, or sometimes I can funnel him back to the other side, and now I can go back into the other sequences. And now we're gonna look at probably the main and highest level response your opponent's gonna have, which is to control your ankle or pant leg. They can usually use this in conjunction with other grips, like a collar grip, to try to off balance you and free their leg, going back to an open De La Hiva guard position where they can threaten Baron Bolos and other attacks or they can even fight up to their elbow trying to push your neck away or even do unorthodox sweeps where they turn and come up to their knees knocking you down. So we're gonna learn how to stabilize in this position and see the different ways you can use this to set up knee cut passes, folding passes, and even diving back takes. Often what they're looking to do is a bump you overhead where they can either loop their leg in and come up for a sweep, or they just bump you and then they free this leg back out because you got off balance. Another way that they'll use this is they'll try to come up on the elbow while holding the pant leg and they punch your neck like this and this makes so much space, it's easier for that leg to come back out and now you have to deal with the open guard again. Again, this lapel as our base is gonna be super useful for blocking both of these. If he tries to pull me overhead, I usually push this leg back, but I still keep my hip kind of locked on this leg so it's not easy to free this foot, right? This left hand here is going to stiff arm into the lapel to create a counterbalance this way, and I wanna bring my weight a little bit to that side. So as he tries to pull up overhead, I have a really nice counterbalance here. If he tries to come up and punch me in the neck here, again, I use this same stiff arm to punch into the arm here, and they keep coming up on your elbow, and I kind of start dropping my weight. Eventually, I can buckle him with the elbow here, and sometimes I'll use this to go directly into passes, which I'll show in a little bit, and I'm gonna bring him back down. From here, I have a lot of different passes I can set up. In the case that I do get bumped a little bit, this outside grip is gonna be incredibly important. So if I'm here and he does bump me to that side a little bit, as long as I keep this, this leg cannot loop over my hand. If I have a weak grip here and this comes in, now there's a lot of risk. When I'm on the outside and he tries to go over, he can't come in here and I can still keep my legs pinched. Sometimes I can even get this to the floor and start turning it back into the kind of the system we did before where he turns in, or I can just keep my balance here and eventually work my way back up and come back up into this position. Another thing to be aware of here is sometimes they'll use this collar grip to punch you to this side and make me have to post and then this foot can loop in. But again, what I want is to keep this knee down and I use this hand not only to frame his leg, but it's a hand post. So the more I have my weight to this side, when he tries to punch me to that side, this becomes like a post but on his leg. And that gives me the balance to start using this to set up different passing options. So now that you understand the base control in this position, we're gonna start looking at different passing opportunities. The first main combos we're gonna look at is the combination of the folding pass and the knee cut pass. These two, when combined together, create such a difficult dilemma for your opponent to defend. Because when you trap the leg, often you can fold them to one side, and the only way to resist that is to open up their knee, which gives you the option to hit powerful, explosive knee cut passing opportunities. So the first pass situation is gonna be the folder pass. So I have the lapel here, and what happens is maybe he was trying to sit up, I'm framing this, and I start to come down. I'm gonna feel that his knee is leaning a bit to the side, it often will be. So what I'm gonna do here is as he's framing with this, 
I'm gonna switch my arm down the back and I'm gonna use my whole chest and pec to almost like arm bar his elbow this way. It completely diffuses this frame pushing me away. So I have balance, I could stall here if I need, and when I'm ready, I switch down the back and I go here. So now I start laying my chest into his elbow, which makes it, keep framing hard, it makes it really hard to use that. From here, I'm gonna shin slide out to the right and look to grab this lapel. I'm gonna drop and I wanna get my head in his chin if I can as quick as possible. Very often, this arm, uh, it can get trapped under his leg, but he's almost always gonna bring it out because he wants to get away. And ideally, he would like to try to come up to his elbow and fight out like this. So what I wanna do is as this comes out, I want to try to catch this here. Because once I have this, he can no longer come up on the elbow. I have a great position to control. From here, there's a few different finishes. I'm just gonna show two basic ones. What I do, the first one is I'm just gonna bring the outside shin over top to clear both of these, and now I can switch. And now it's very easy to run around to side control. The next one is one of my favorites, which is when I'm here, if I can weave my knee in between his legs like this, I have almost a guaranteed mound. I can sprawl his hip down, my right knee comes up to the hip, and it comes straight up to the mount position here and can continue to attack. So now looking at the knee cut here, often what happens is as I start to get this position stabilized, I start to lean my weight a little bit this way, you'll feel your opponent opens this knee up this way because he wants to resist that pressure. And I'm gonna use that force that he's using to strike with a knee cut. So what happens is I go here, I start to fold, and now I'm gonna shoot my shin right into his shin and I try to open his hips as hard as I can like this here. A lot of times he's gonna keep the pant leg. If you go fast enough, you might be able to get rid of it. A lot of times I go here like this and I feel that open and I can go here. But as long as I can get him to turn, which is actually pretty easy when he resists, I get this underhook. Now I can release, pull, dig in, and eventually break this grip and finish the pass. So another model I like to use here is I can, of course, control with this as long as I need. But when I want to be more aggressive about the pass, sometimes what I'll do is I come back up. Sometimes what I'll do is I switch this hand to the knee and I start opening his thigh here. If I can open this enough, it's easy enough to shoot for a knee cut here, but there's a great push-pull mechanic you can use here where if I start to pull this and he resists that way, now I start leaning my weight with my forearm on the leg here and that folds and I can drop back in and start going for a folder. But very often what'll happen is when I go here, I lean my weight on this, he opens his knee a bit to resist and I can use that to snap this open. It literally like 10 X is the force on this pass because he's resisting opening into the cut. If you find that variation hard where I use the forearm here, you can actually grab on the outside of the pants. It's a little bit easier. Uh, I like both. It would be the same thing. I just push here and then I can snap open. And if I'm here and he resists that way with the leg, then I can push drop into the folder and go from there. Another unorthodox attack system you can go from here, but also really powerful, is diving back ticks. When you trap the leg in between, they're usually expecting a guard pass, but if you quickly switch up to a lapel grip, you can use this to roll over your shoulder and invert and come into strong back take opportunities which will completely confuse your opponent and always keep them on guard. So this next setup I often get when I'm trapping the leg and I, I'm starting with a pant grip. So here, instead of the foot, I kind of trap and I keep this pant grip. From here, he may grab my collar and usually I'm like stuffing this all the way through to sit on it. And if he opens the knee a bit, I can actually use this to go for a cut like before, but sometimes he stays tight. And this is a great time to go for the diving back take. So as this leg stuff, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a cross collar, I'm gonna roll over my right shoulder here, and I hit this, I'm kind of being loose so I can show you. I'm keeping my shin clamped in on his thigh here, and then now this left leg can stomp downward, and this foot's even across, and I can elevate his hip and start looking to grab up here to come up to the back, connect my chest to the back, and finish. Be sure to let me know if you guys have any questions or requests regarding this position or any other position you'd like to see me cover in the future. And as always, if you like the content, like, share, subscribe. Thanks a lot.